Happy New Year's, you guys. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. We are here with a brand new season of All Elite with Cakes. We are in the year of 2024. We are here now. Y'all got to excuse me. It is cold in the D. The real D. Not Detroit. It's cold in Dallas. Um, It's been cold since yesterday. Uh, Cowboys Nation, we failed. Um, it didn't work out for us like it was supposed to. Green Bay came with the weather. Sad day in Dallas. It's just been uh, it's been crazy since you know failures left and right. But we gonna keep it rocking. We gonna keep it pushing. Hey Banks, we gonna keep it rocking. Keep it pushing. We are in twenty twenty four. Um, changes it's changes. Y'all saw I've been teasing the changes of the show. Um, this year I will be covering some Ring of Honor now. Uh, I know I don't, yeah, it's yeah, I I was not pleased with what I saw yesterday. I, let's just say I, I turned the channel right after the four. No, I'm not even no Texas fan, I would dare not. I just don't see myself. No, I'd rather live in a well than be a Texas fan. We don't, I'm good with that. But, um, anyways, hey, Sean, hey to the regulars. I know people are so used to me. You know, I was out for a good three weeks vacation, it was the holidays, and uh, needed a break. Everybody needs a break. Um, so we are here, new season. As Shanti said, I am strict this season. Um, yes, moral thoroughly, I am strict on my show, however. Not real strict. It's still the same me, but this season is more important. Um, this era that I'm in, in my personal life, and also in this content world, uh, a lot of narratives, clickbaits, and stuff like that. People are losing the plot. People are losing their their the reason why they do this, and I was starting to be one of those as well. So I'm getting back to the picture. So this season, I'm going to be, of course, covering AEW. Uh, I know we was used to the show of the week. We're not doing that no more. I took that out. Uh, no more women business of the week. Um, I took that out as well. The only thing that I'm doing is match of the week. It can be gender neutral. It can be a woman. It can be a men's match. Uh, that's what I'm doing. I'm still doing uh, women's business. I have added Ring of Honor to the show. It is Keeks of Honor Hour. Uh, I have added that to the show. Now, y'all might be like, dang, that's going to be pretty lengthy and long for you. But no, watch me work. I can do this. I am the woman for the job. That's why I'm doing it. It was highly recommended by the people, by the community to cover ROH. And I am going to cover ROH. Now, I may not get in depth into ROH. Uh, as far as my content, because I don't want to overwhelm myself, but I will point out some uh, important things that I feel like that y'all should know and y'all should watch and look out for some certain wrestlers that's been booked on uh, ROH. OK, so that's what that's about. Um, episode 70 today. Episode 70 today, Diamonds in the Sky. Uh, that's the name of the episode for today. We're going to get into it. A lot of wrestling has happened this week. Uh, a lot of alternatives had a lot of great pay-per-views and uh, um, some shows this week. It was the homecoming uh, for AEW at Daly's Place in Florida. You know, Daly's Place was the main spot that AEW started where they had their first event there. That's their home. And I like when they do these homecoming shows. Uh, these homecoming shows has been dedicated to uh, the late Brody Lee. So negative one had a lot to do with the booking uh, because it's somebody that didn't like uh, AEW Dynamite booking. And I had to explain to him it's for the children. It's for negative one. So uh you got to keep that in mind, okay? So we're going to get into it because it's a lot. Hey, me who, it's a lot to cover. So we're going to get started. I finally got my notes on the other screen, y'all. So if y'all see me looking this way, I'm looking at uh, my notes because you got to write a lot of this stuff down, especially if you're covering content and resting content. You don't want to just 
you know, I can't just go off the dome when it comes to AEW. I got to write things down. Okay, so um, we're going to i going to start off with both the openers uh, for Dynamite and also Collision. Again, if you just came on to the show, I'm not doing show of the week anymore. We was doing it because, you know, it was split for a reason. But now that it's not split anymore, I'm just going to cover both of them the same way that I did last year. But instead, it's no voting or nothing like that. OK, because uh, I really want people to understand what they are watching. Um, uh, WrestleNomics did a... a the la it was around uh December. Uh WrestleNomics did the whole uh chart of you could tell by who is educated by the fan base. And it was it was very telling that wrestling fans are not there. So sometimes you gotta kind of break it down. So this is what this show is gonna be about this year, especially with AEW, because not a lot of people can understand in ring storytelling really well like you they have to get the promos and the segments and the videos and the, this and this and this but they sometimes will miss things with the in-ring storytelling because you know some people are so used to a certain type of wrestling style and um they will miss the in-ring storytelling so that's what this show is about and i'm gonna help y'all help you okay so um, with the openers, let's put up the graphic. It was a uh, hangman page versus Claudio uh, Castanoli. I say his name, last name wrong all the time. Y'all, it's my accent. Um, and then also for collision, it was Adam Copeland. He did an open challenge and it ended up being Lee Moriarty. But I call him evil Frank Ocean. OK, so he will remain evil Frank Ocean on this show. OK, <laughs> So you had that for the openers for Collision. Um, the Hangman Page uh, match, it was, again, Hangman versus Claudio, two quote-unquote stiff workers, as people will say, but um, they work really, really well. The Gorilla, play, uh, Gorilla Press Slam that he did on Adam Page at the ring, that was so insane to me. It was physical on both ends. Uh, Adam Page takes the win, of course. Um, right opener for Daly's Place. Um, Adam Page, you know, he's daily place on, you know, and Claudio, I want to say this is Claudio's probably first time at Daily's Place, correct me if I'm wrong, um, but it was a great opener for uh, Dynamite's Homecoming, and then you got Collision, <laughs> uh, Adam Page, Adam Copeland, I was about to say Adam Page, so these two Adams, Adam Copeland came out and, uh, you know, he said when he signed with AEW, he wants to wrestle some of these younger talent and things like that. And then evil Frank Ocean, he comes out and uh, a part of Shane Taylor promotions along with Shane Taylor himself. And um, they issued a match for the open challenge. Now the open challenge, it was actually a great match. I will give my thumbs up to Adam Copeland. Y'all know I'm not the biggest Adam Copeland fan, but I can see the passion that he is trying in. And it was also a great showcasing for uh, Lee, Evil Frank Ocean. Um, it definitely benefited Adam Copeland as well because Adam Copeland came to AW with these fantasy bookings. And, you know, he's used to wrestling one way for almost 20 plus years. And now he's you know, he's starting to find his flow, uh, starting to adapt a little bit because you have every type of style at AW. We got strong style, lucha style, technical style, uh, brutal style, and all of that. So um, he's, you know, you got to use some of these younger talents that are used to these different techniques. Uh, so he can be prepared for these matches that he has fantasy booked himself with. Um, so basically, he's doing kind of the CM Punk method or CM Punk way, because we all remember what CM Punk said when he first got to AEW. He's going to work with people like Darby Allen and things like that. Adam Copeland is on the same thing. But Adam Copeland, it seemed like he's more on the wholesome side with it. I still got my eye on him because I'm not the biggest Adam Copeland fan. Everybody knows that, but I will give my credit when it's due. So I'll give him a orange Cassidy type of thumbs up. Okay. Um, but yeah, that's, uh, that was collision and also dynamite. So we're going to move on. Um, the next, uh, 
card that happened uh, for both Dynamite and Collision. It was on Dynamite, it was the eight man tag match. And also on Collision, it was the six man tag match. Uh, for Dynamite's homecoming, it was uh, Lance Archer, uh, basically Mongol Embassy, Brian Cage and Gates of Agony versus Orange Cassidy, Dustin Rose, Adam Copeland again, and Preston Vance. Again, this was a booking for uh, by Negative One. Y'all know Pres Preston Vance is his man. People was kind of confused on why he was on the babyface end. Again, Brody Lee. A dedication match and then on collision it was a six man tag which it was brian cage gates of agony which is mongol embassy uh versus lance archer and the righteous now if you didn't look at it this way you're probably like what how i go from this to this i'm going to explain it to you so on the dynamite match again a fun match it was for negative one so we're going to keep it positive because it was for negative one. Um, it was a lot of things happening in this match um, that was kind of comical, especially when Orange Cassidy kept trying to attempt to do the cho choke slam, and he ends up doing the choke slam. Um, they wasn't tagging, tagging Lance Archer in this match. Like, they was, you know, Mongo Embassy was tagging each other. They wasn't tagging Lance Archer. It was a whole conflict between Lance Archer and Brian Cage. So they end up going at it. And, um, you know, Preston Vance. Now, uh, Preston Vance is a, actually a great wrestler. He just has to find his character. Um, that's the only thing that's missing, in my opinion. He just needs to find his character. And once he finds his character, he'll be straight. Um, I think um, him being a heel is good. Me, personally, I feel like Preston Vance should be in ROH for a little bit to see if he can find it there. And if he can't find it there, then maybe he just needs to remain in affection or return probably back to Dark Order. I don't know. But only time would tell. Uh, Dustin Rose was going off for some reason. Like, he was going crazy in this match. Uh, he Dustin Rose has some adrenaline. Like, when it, when it gets real, he definitely picks up the adrenaline out of nowhere. And of course, Adam Copeland, he did again, he did a great job. It was a fun match for him. You could tell that Adam Copeland is having fun. Uh, you could tell that he's enjoying this, despite what people are saying online that he's being misused. He, you know, you, people expect uh, instant gratification, instant reaction, instant, like straight to the top. And like he said, he's just here to work with the younger talent. So um, Preston Vance ended up getting the pin. And of course they ended up winning um, again, negative one. So, Hey, you can't be negative about it. Okay. And I saw on collision. So with the conflict between Lance Archer and Brian Cage, that's what leads to this match that happened on Saturday. And I actually really enjoy Lance Archer being along with the righteous. They look right together as a trio. I really, really enjoyed them a lot. And I want to say the Gates of Agony, you could tell that they improved a lot since they came back from Japan. Um, when they did the Japan, uh, when they was booked out there overseas, you could tell that Khan uh, definitely on cons in uh, as far as in ring uh, psychology, he has gotten a lot better since he came back from overseas. So Japan is sometimes is a, is a good thing for a lot of athletes um, when they're trying to build themselves as a technical wrestler or trying to find themselves uh, character wise. They find themselves, and Brian Cage was just on his lucha um, underground lucha bag in this match as well. And you know who was really, really going off on this match? Uh, Dutch. Dutch was going crazy in this match. Dutch was just doing things. That's why I like the Righteous. Y'all need to stop sleeping on the Righteous. I really, really enjoy them. I like their character. I like when people, you know, people are starting to get to the snap. Somebody said on Twitter, talking about they became a Righteous fan because I kept pressing the issue. I'm going to keep pressing the issue. I'm going to keep pressing it. It's working. It's working. Okay. I like the righteous. Snap your fingers. <laughs> okay. So, oh yeah. Khan did the, a very unique pedigree. It was, it was different. It was the pedigree, but it was like different. I did like that. That's this finisher. So shout out to the pedigree. And also Jake the snake attacking uh, Jose the assistant and also uh, Prince Nana. 
Uh, he gave them both a right right hand one. He did uh, Jose the Assistant on Dynamite, and then he did Prince Nana on Collision. So shout out to Jake the Snake. He still got that right, you know. Ageism, no ageism, y'all. Jake the Snake is a legend, okay? So uh, great fun tag matches. You made me a righteous. Good. I'm glad that y'all are good, good. That's not real ball. That's not real ball. Okay, so um, next up after that on uh, Dynamite and also on Collision. On Dynamite, we had uh, Samoa Joe. Um, he did his promo. Uh, he came out and he was just letting it be known that he is here to, he's here for whoever, whoever want to step to him. He's not hiding. He's not ducking. And um, also, shout out to the change of the belt. It looks nice. It's back. We back. AW Championship back is back to meaning something. It's back to meaning passion. That black looks good. Samoa Joe looks good with that gold around him. You know, he came out and then uh, Swerve came out and interrupted his celebration. Uh, Swerve is issuing it, saying that he's he letting it be known as well that he's coming for that belt. Uh, so enjoy it while you can. And then on top of that, you had Adam Page. Adam Page stepped out and he's letting Swerve know you're not going to get that belt because I'm going to get that belt. I'm going to stop you from getting it. And then I'm going to whoop Samoa Joe. And we have to remember Adam Page is mad at Samoa Joe because again, Samoa Joe kind of made the deal with the devil um, being Adam Cole. Uh, possibly. That's just my that's just my theory. Um, he made a deal with the devil, and we know that Adam Page was attacked by uh, the Undisputed. So Adam Page is coming for everybody. He's coming for Samoa Joe. He's going to come for Adam Cole eventually, Roger Strong, all of them, and especially Swerve. Swerve is his arch nemesis. Uh, so they that's like a rivalry, an AEW rivalry is uh, Swerve and Adam Page. You can flip-flop it. don't matter. Like, they will... They're they're trying to make them like the Stone Cold Rock type rivalry at AEW. And then, of course, Hook comes out. Uh, I love how they did the like, foreshadowing, like the spotlight of Hook's name. And then you see the spotlight. He's up on the roof like he's Batman. I like that touch a lot because Hook is he's you know, he's a small dude. He's like our Gohan. Like he. He don't say much, but he's about that drama. So he was stooding up to Samoa Joe. And we know that Wednesday that they have a match against each other for the AEW championship, which I feel like will be good. I'm praying for Taz because I know Taz is going to be standing up the entire match. Poor Taz. I feel bad for Taz because I know Taz is going to be nervous, but he's also proud of his boy. So. We had that, and then also on Collisions in um, after the six man tag match on Collision, we ended up uh, Pris Nana ended up giving a promo, letting it be known to the Bullet Club Gold that he is issuing a challenge for uh, the six man ROH uh, championships. Hey, Savage uh, championships, and then of course Jay White responded. Um. He's accepting a challenge, and it's going to happen on Wednesday for the ROH World Six Man Tag Team Championship, Bullet Club Gold versus Mongol Embassy. That should be a great six man tag because again, the uh, the ass boys <laughs> they have improved in ring, and then you can't go wrong with Jay White and then Mongol Embassy. Like I had said previously, uh, the uh, Ag the Gates of Agony they improved overseas. In Japan, and then Brian Cage, he has delivered. He hasn't undelivered since he's been in Mongol Embassy. So it should be a great trios um, tag match for the ROH Six Man uh, Championship. So you had that. So uh, moving on, uh, also on Dynamite, it was uh, Sammy Guevara versus Ricky Starks, and then on Collision, it was Dustin Rose versus Willie Mack. Um, two matches that. I can honestly say people was not looking forward to at all. Um, unfortunately for Ricky Starks and also Sammy Guevara, they are under my ex-goat 
um, it's the elephant in the room because of him. And so it's affecting that, you know, that rivalry, what they have going on between uh, the La Sex guys and uh, Ricky Starks and Big Bill. But you had this two match. And once again, I said it on Twitter, Sammy Guevara, he, he's reckless with his stunts. Like, it, it's not clean. And it's like he doesn't care for his opponent. He doesn't, you know, he doesn't do the dance. He leads and just because it was plenty of time. Ricky, like I said, Ricky had to rush himself to take certain bumps that Sammy was doing. Like he doesn't look after his opponent when he wrestled. He wrestled so reckless and so careless. And I'm not really a fan of his wrestling as of late. He just can't work with his opponent like he should. Yeah, it's like he's running a thousand miles. And then Ricky Starks, he has, I've always felt like he has the potential to be great, but he kind of reserves himself with certain things. Like he wrestles so reserves. And I and I could kind of figure it's probably because of the neck injury. Like the neck injury, I feel like it causes him to reserve from uh, actual what he has the potential of doing. Not saying I want him to be a high, high flyer or something like that. I just want him to add a little bit more to his move sets. Cause it it doesn't it doesn't draw me like it should. It did the first time, but I think right after that neck injury, it kind of, you know, oh, you know, he kind of wrestles reserved. But then again, you're wrestling against Sammy. So I get it. Like it's just like this guy is not a great you know, he's not looking after me and I'm trying. So it, it was just a, I won't say it was a, it wasn't a bad match, but it was an okay match to me. And it wasn't Ricky Stark's fault. It was more Sammy Guevara's fault on my end, because again, he wrestles really, really reckless. Um, And then of course the outside affair is with uh, Jericho and also big bill. It didn't make it no better because again, Jericho has that elephant in the room. He has that stain now since the whole controversy that happened. Um, so it's going to rub this, whatever this is, it, this especially this tag title, is rubbing it the wrong way. Okay, so we're going to move on to Collision. And then, of course, again, like I said, nobody kind of cared for this match, but it ended up delivering uh, Dustin Rose and Willie Mack. It really, when it picked up, it picked up. At first, it was very slow, but it picked up. And once again, like I said, Dustin Rose be finding his adrenaline like in the middle of the match, and he just started going out for his age. And I really thought Bro was retiring, honestly. I thought this was his last. I thought... 2023 was his last year. I think that's what he said. Uh, I thought that's what he said. But still wrestling. Um, it, like I said, it was a great match between uh, Dustin Rhodes and Willie Mack. I do enjoy Willie Mack. He does a really, really impressive moonsault um, for his size. And uh, Dustin Rhodes, like I said, for his age, he was really technical and physical in this match. Uh, it's like he was wrestling with a chip on his shoulder, like he had something to prove. Like he's wrestling with emotion, uh, Dustin Rhodes. If you haven't, like, I noticed it. I noticed it on Wednesday. Like he's wrestling with, uh, with a chip on his shoulder or something. Like something bothering him, and he's just taking it out on people or something. I don't know. But you had that, so we're gonna move right on along. Um, Adam Cole, he came out with the undisputed, and Adam Cole issued another, uh. Letting it be known that they all going to get the gold. And this promo is why I feel like maybe Samoa Joe did kind of make a deal with the devil. Made a deal with him. Um, because he's saying that he's going to win against Adam Cole. No, he Warlow is going to beat Samoa Joe. And then Adam Cole is going to beat Warlow. So that's why it makes me feel like they, they had a little deal going on. Like they, I don't know. Wait, I mean, if you feel so in the comments, leave so. But I feel like it's it's a story within that. Um, but he's just saying that we're gonna undisputed, we're gonna get all the gold. Um, we are here. Uh, Warlow is gonna be the next champion. I'm gonna be the next champion. Roger Strong is gonna be the next international champion. Um, the kingdom is your ROH tag champions. Um, 
And then uh, right along with that, that's when you have Roderick Strong versus Bounty Keith, Brian, uh, Brian Keith. And then on Collision, you had Hangman Page versus J.D. Drake. OK, so um, Roderick Strong versus Brian Keith. Again, this is another Brian Keith showcasing in AEW. And I feel like he will be signed um, not not too long like he will be signing a little bit like they're going to sign him eventually i feel like he's going to get that signed because he's been on uh aew for a good two months i want to say two months now they've been showcasing him so we ready to see the graphic or we ready to get the news but uh it was great it was just showing roger strong getting roger strong prepared for um Orange Cassidy for the international championship because you know he's coming for Orange Cassidy and he's just showing up like making an example out of Brian Keith of what he's going to do to Orange Cassidy. So you had that. It wasn't a a very long match, uh, so it was just one of those showcasing match, getting the person built up for the next opponent, and it was great that they trust Bounty Keith into that. Uh, so on Collision. Now, it was some people that was laughing that Hangman Page was going against J.D. Drake. But if y'all ain't never seen J.D. Drake wrestle, J.D. Drake is a great wrestler. Like, for his size, he is quick. He is fast. He is very, like, he has speed for his size. J.D. Drake is a great wrestler. Like, he was so quick against Adam Page. Like, he got down. Like, you know how some people, you know, Ugh, when they get down, they get up because Eddie Kingston is quick too. He's one of those too. Like they are brawlers, but uh, JD Drake is more like a technical brawler. He's not like very sloppy. He's not sloppy at all. And Hangman Page and JD Drake, they have history with each other because they came from the same indie promotion um, way back in the gap. So, um, but they never faced each other before when they was at that indie promotion. Like they was trained, they trained together from my understanding and they are from the same, uh, indie promotion. So it was a little call back there and they finally had the opportunity to wrestle against each other, but it was a great match. Again, Hangman Page, um, he did the Moonsaw shooting star on JD Drake. That was beautiful. That was phenomenal. You cannot go wrong with Adam Page. Like, I love when Adam Page is booked. Keep showing Adam Page, especially for the ladies. Shout out to the ladies. You know what I'm saying? We just want to see more of the cowboy. We just, um, the highest women demo at AEW is Adam Page for lots of reasons. You know, shout out to the ladies, the AEW girlies, the AEW girlies. I got to see, yeah, JD, like JD Drake is really good. Like he's, people be sleeping on him. They be sleeping on him because he look like. JD, because JD, JD Drake looked like he drives trucks. That's why people be sleeping on him because he looked like he drives trucks for years and years and years. Like you look like he looked like you see him on the highway just driving 18 wheelers. Like he drives trucks. Like he got a CDL. That's why they sleep on him because he looked like he got a CDL. Y'all got to stop discriminating. Y'all got to stop that. He might look like he drives trucks, but that man can wrestle. <laughs> all right and then um we're gonna get uh let me make sure oh yeah and then on collision hook he came out to a uh, face the indie talent you know getting ready and it was funny to me because they had hook coming out you know y'all remember when the rock used to enter the building and he would have his whole suitcase on it with that versace silk and just walking in with his shades on just i know y'all remember that but hook basically did kind of did that but he had on a hoodie and he had on the you know his suitcase and stuff like that and i was like why he walking in like the rock why they filming this like it's the rock and it was so funny to me but um you know making a big deal of hook because you know hook 
challenge Samoa Joe for the championship. And we know that he's facing him on Wednesday. So Hook did a whole, um, you know, he faced a local talent out there in Virginia. And uh, he ended up doing his um, submission like his dad and uh, taking a win. It was just a showcase of Hook because people love Hook. Hook is over. Hook is a draw. And he is like everybody's son. It's, he's like an AEW baby, you know? So we are protective over Hook. The, you know, the whole gender and Hook thing, uh, the gender thing is tonight or whatever. Uh, people are saying that he's going to beat Seth Rollins and stuff like that because Tony Khan was talking shit. So send Hook. You know, you can't go wrong with Hook. So you had that. And then so we're going to get into the main events of both Dynamite and Collision. So on uh, Dynamite, uh, the main event, it was Takushka and Powerhouse Hobbs versus Sting and Darby Allen. This is this was Sting last um Appearance at the Daily's Place, you know, he uh, returned, you know, he entered AEW at the Daily's Place at Revolution and um, just a little, you know, memory, callback history, AEW history. So this was his last time at the Daily's Place. And then on uh, Collision, you had the trios match. It was FTR and Daniel Garcia versus the House of Lack. Um, they faced off. Um, the first dynamite now sting, he jumped off a table, uh, scared everybody. It scared me. Like he just scares me. And I'm just like, sting at your age, please don't scare us. Okay. Because Seth Rollins almost killed you. And I wasn't over Seth Rollins doing that for a long time. It took me a long time to get over there and I didn't want nothing to happen to him. Um, Darby was getting thrown around. They did ring around a Rosie on Darby Allen and threw him on the ropes and stuff. It was just brutal. Like they powerhouse Hobbs was just throwing both Sting and Darby Allen around. But uh Sting was having fun. Uh he enjoyed it. And uh I love when Sting no sales. It is so funny to me, but he's an icon. He can do what he want. Takushka, um again. Great. Takushka is phenomenal. I like seeing soup, evil soup, evil Cinnabon guy. And then uh, you can't go wrong with Darby Allen. Darby Allen will sell like he never sell before. Uh, he scared everybody. They say that he did hurt himself on the rope thing, but knowing Darby Allen, he will be fine. He's made of steel, apparently, because he done everything doesn't happen to him. Uh, he done ran, uh, done fell down the stairs and landed on chairs and landed on nails and different things. He's just the daredevil at AEW, so you couldn't go wrong with this match. Um, collisions main event FTR and Daniel Garcia versus House of Black. Now, now, uh, you know, Sir Black. He and Black was almost he almost did the Daniel Garcia dance. That was funny that they was doing that little hint there. Um, what else? Uh, that now this match it, it was good, but it went a little bit too long in my opinion. This this match was a little bit too long for my for my liking, but also it was just showing it was just showing that. It was a reason why Brody King was in the Continental uh, Tournament. It, it was the reason why Brody King was in that tournament. Like, Brody King was out wrestling Dex, and he was out wrestling. Like, he was out wrestling FTR, okay? So, it was a reason why he was in that tournament. Um, he, in my opinion, was the MVP of the match. Brody King stood out to me out of everybody. In this match. Yeah, he gonna have to retire. But yeah, um uh House of Black ended up winning and then FCR attacked him again or something. I don't know. It was it was just a lot. Now that ending to it, it, it was a lot going on. I was kind of confused at that angle or whatever, but hey, I guess you know House of Black needed a win. 
people was complaining that they wasn't winning a lot, so they finally had got their win. But that ending, it could have did without. Like, what was the point of them winning just for them to get attacked? Uh, they could have did without that. Um, but the bigger thing that happened, especially after the dynamite, is um, and I forgot to give. I forgot to get my producer picture of them, but Young Bucks ended up returning. They came out after the match. Um, you know, Young Bucks always cause controversy. Young Bucks, you know, I love the books. You cannot make me hate the books. Uh, people just hate the books, and it's just so funny to me. All of I love it though. They came back with their mustaches looking so cute. It's just so cute. <laughs> but uh Young Bucks in Sting and Darby Allen. Uh Sting has made a statement and he said that he chose the Young Bucks. He wants to have his last match with the Young Bucks. Whether you like it or not, the Sting has spoken. Okay. He has spoken. So you got to get over it. Looking like spy versus. Yeah, they I, <laughs> they looked so cute to me. I was just like, Lord. But I love seeing them. I popped. I love it. So shout out to the Young Bucks. I love when Elite is back on the screen. Okay, so that was a Collision and Dynamite. So we're going to get down to Rampage and also Battle of the Bell. So we're going to start with Rampage. Uh, I won't take too long on Rampage. Y'all know women business is women business. So I will talk about Queen Aminata and uh, Sheeta on women's business. So, But uh, for Rampage, it was Eddie Kingston versus Willa Yuta. I want to say on this match, Willa Yuta was doing a lot of Claudio's tactics against uh, Eddie Kingston. Um, but Eddie Kingston comes out on top of this in this match and Willa Yuta ends up losing. Um, but I feel like uh, for Willa Yuta, um, again, when he's not talking, Willa Yuta is really, really great. I do enjoy seeing Willa Yuta wrestle. He is a great wrestler. He can wrestle. He's just very dorky when he gets on the mic. You know, he's, it's just, it's, it's Yuta, you know? And then I'm not saying that to shade him or anything like that. Cause again, he's a phenomenal wrestler. It's just, it's just you, but he was doing a lot of Claudio's tactics, mind games against Eddie Kingston. So he is learning from the BCC. Well, he has learned from the BCC. Okay. And then next up, it was Swerve Strickland versus Matt Seidel, um, Seidel, Seidel, whatever, um, Again, another swerve strictly to showcase that Matt is a veteran, um, one of the best high flyers um, in, in wrestling. Uh, I'll say top 10 on my list. Um, but again, another showcasing for Swerve Strickland to build him up because, again, he's going to end up being in the AEW title picture. So it's just building him up. Uh, so now, you know, whenever he gets that title shot, it will mean something, okay? And then uh, the main event, of course, it has something to do with negative one, so you cannot be upset. Again, it's for negative one, Dark Order versus uh, Cool Hack, well, the ex-Jazz members, um, Daddy Daddy Magic, Cool Hack, and Jake Hager. Um, fun match. It was a fun match. I, I won't criticize it too much because, again, it was for negative one, negative one booking. It was for Brody Lee. And, of course, Dark Order took uh, the win. It was it was fun. It was just a fun main event. And, of course, negative one came out, and uh, they all celebrated it in uh, memory of Brody, the late Brody Lee. So that was uh, your rampage. So let's get into Battle of the Belts. Let's pull up the Battle of the Bells. Uh, first off, it was Ricky Starks and Big Bill versus Chris Jericho and Sammy Guevara. And it was the AEW World Tag Team Championship. It was a street fight. Um, the street fight, of course, was outside. Jericho has been kind of smart to avoid the booze because, again, Jericho, he couldn't keep his mouth closed. And controversy has happened. It was... Sad to see, but 
you know, things happen and, you know, his controversy, it, you know, karma has no time limit. You think, you know, things are under the dirt and sometimes what's done in the dark comes to the light and unfortunately came to the light for him. But more so, that's another story for another day. Now, the, the street fight, however, overall, it wasn't a bad street fight. Um, a lot of cool moves happened. Sammy did a lot of like stunts that he did. I thought it was kind of cool. It was whatever. Uh, Ricky's brought a little bit of his aggressive side out. Big Bill did phenomenal. He sold the uh suplex that Jericho did on the car. Um, Sammy turned it to Shane McMahon out of nowhere and uh did a dive from a uh, top of almost closer to the rafters, climb the thing, and um. It was just a lot uh, towards the end uh, because we was it was looking like Jericho and Sammy Guevara was going to win. That was what people thought what was going to end up happening was we was going to get new tag champs. But again, Jericho is smart. He knows that ain't nobody feeling him right now. So they was not going to make that call. And again, Sammy Guevara, he's just going to always have that stain. Like he's trying really hard to have that baby face image, but it's just not working. It's not working. Like beautiful baby though. They have a beautiful baby with um with Ty uh Taya. No, not Taya. Uh Tay Conti. Sorry. Beautiful baby with Tay Conti. Uh I know he's trying to re-image yourself but it's just not working the fans is just not feeling him and in my opinion i just feel like said sammy just go to roh just go to roh go in roh for a while get out of tv for a while chris jericho you definitely need to get off tv just just get off tv and 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 go to and just do something and i'm saying it as an ex Jericho Holic is so sad to say, sad to see. But um, Ricky Starks and Big Bill end up retaining. Uh, Takushka hits Jericho with the Kendo stick. Uh, Big Bill ended up putting Jericho through the table. Sammy Guevara, like I said, was on his Shane McMahon. He flew off the top, and then uh, Powerhouse Hobbs end up getting Ricky out, and then he ends up landing right on uh, you know, the stage right on the stage uh team taz little reference so we'll see what the reason was we saw they uh posted the promo as to why they did that powerhouse hobbs uh, issued a promo as to why he did what he did so we'll see where this leads to because again it's the stain in the AEW tag titles right now. And it has everything to do with Jericho and it has slightly to do with Sammy Guevara. Okay. So we, something got to shake for them because it's unfortunate for uh, Ricky Starks and also Big Bill because the character that they have, it actually works the whole kind of like a Shawn Michaels and Big Diesel a little bit. That does work. But because, again, it's Chris Jericho saying it's just it's not going to hit. And it's just so unfortunate for Ricky. He just never picked. It just never works. No matter what. I don't want to say maybe it's him. He's the bad look or something. But I don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So you had that. And um, next up on uh, Battle of the Belts. Um, you had uh, for uh, the international championship, it was Orange Cassidy uh, versus Preston Vance. Um, like I said, Preston Vance is a good wrestler. He's just missing something, and he just needs to find it. Once he finds that character, because he, in my opinion, or maybe they, if they showcase him more, because I don't want to say he don't look like he fit in with Rouge Faction. He could fit in with Rouge Faction. They just have to use him a little bit more. And um, he just needs to show a little bit of his aggression. And he was starting to a little bit towards the end of the match. He started to show more of his aggression of a heel that he could possibly be uh, for that faction to fit in with Roosh aggression. Because you have um, you have Jurelistico. He's more of like the sneaky 
the sneaky heel because he he's in character with what he does at triple a so it, it it works if they showcase them a little bit more. Um, and if you don't know, Roosh is out with that injury. Uh, he did get injured during that tournament. That was an actual injury. It's nothing too serious. It's just something that he just needs to take a few weeks off for it to heal, and he'll be back. But uh, he did injure himself. So that's why we haven't seen Roosh, because Roosh did uh, have a little injury from that uh, tournament. That was an actual injury, no cane fag. Uh, Orange Cassidy. Now, during this, in the beginning of the match, you did have United Kingdom come out. It was um, Roger Strong and also the Kingdom. They came out to sit a uh, front row, front and center, to watch the match to time Orange Cassidy. Now, if you was watching this, uh, this encounter, Orange Cassidy is starting to be a little bit aggressive. He is starting to talk shit because he was talking. He is to Roderick Strong. Like, he was just looking at him like, if you want to come in the ring, just come in the ring. I don't. He was like, I'm not with all of that talk. You talking a little bit too much. Orange Cassidy is starting to show a little bit uh, a little bit more aggression, um, especially when people are trying to come for that gold. Um, but something interesting to me happened even after that match because, of course, Orange Cassidy ends up retaining – um, the title, but then the kingdom got into the ring and they started to circle around Orange Cassidy. But um, if you didn't notice, none of the best friends came out, Rocky Romero or Trent Beretta. So um, what's going on with that? What's going on? Hey, Lyric, what's going on with that? I have no idea, but that's, I did notice that they always come, they always come to him, but they didn't come this time. Uh, Trent Beretta and uh, also Rocky Romero. So keep that in mind. Maybe they will use that. Maybe they will use that. No, I have not talked about Jack Perry. I'm saving the best for last. I'm saving that for last. You didn't miss anything yet. Um, but yeah, so that was the battle of the belts. And now let's move on to Again, new segment, Kinks of Honor. This is my Ring of Honor recap. Uh, it was a lot that happened. I, like I said, I won't go in thorough with Ring of Honor on this show, but I will highlight what I feel like what y'all need to know, especially those if you don't have a subscription to Ring of Honor. It's only $9.99. Uh, it's not high at all y'all have netflix y'all have hulu y'all have hbo max i don't want to hear that no i'm not trying to spend ten dollars it's just ten dollars to look at ring of honor especially if you are like you say you are for women's wrestling ring of honor has done an amazing job showcasing women on uh ring of honor okay so ring of honor episode 46 uh, Zach Knight returned in action. He uh faced John Cruz. John Cruz is a, a veteran. Um, he's been wrestling for probably almost 30 years, I want to say almost 25, 30, 25 years. Uh, in the local, you know, people know him in the independence and also Ring of Honor. So, uh, Zach Knight ends up taking a win for that. Tony Nice was also in action. Um, he's you, you know, he's one of the uh, Mid card heel in ROH. He went against Marcus Cross. And then um, for the Ring of Honor World Television Championship, it was Kyle Fletcher versus Angelico. Uh, Kyle Fletcher, you cannot go wrong with Kyle Fletcher. I want to see him in the tournament uh, this year. Uh, Kyle Fletcher is definitely the future, and he showcased that in Ring of Honor. I, I possibly see them having Kyle Fletcher uh be one of those um the people at ring of honor that is built on as well along with athena uh being the face for ring of honor uh also it was a segment for dawson castle dawson Ca dawson castle wants to wrestle against johnny tv but johnny tv is like he's not tv ready so i'm not going to fight him so uh that's a story on Ring of Honor, Dalton Castle, and also Johnny TV. That's a story at Ring of Honor. If you haven't been watching, um, that's why Dalton Castle been 
you know, deep down and lazy because Johnny TV has been antagonizing him, took his spirit, took his soul, and uh, he wants to fight him. But Johnny's just like, I don't want to fight him. He's not TV ready. The irony, because that's his name, Johnny TV. <laughs> Then after that, you have, of course, the Righteous was in action. Uh, they faced the Dawsons. Uh, they defeated the Dawsons. And then uh, after that, Shane Taylor gave a great promo um, because uh, for the main event, which uh, it was end up being Shane Taylor promotions against the infantry, which will be later on. Um, and then after that, you had the Iron Savages versus the Boys. Um, that was a great, fun tag match. I do enjoy the boys. They are very fun. They're very charismatic. And then Iron Savages, they're very strong. They're technical, but they also have charisma. Um, very 90-ish. Uh, I feel like their characters are kind of making fun of the 90s. Uh, sweaty and big uh, type of wrestlers that Vince used to be hard for. Uh, then you have Cole Carter versus Serpentico. Uh, Cole Carter was out there, and uh, Maria and also uh, Griff Garrison interference helped Cole Carter with that win. Uh, if you are not in Texas Indies, uh, it's a funny story between Cole Carter and me because uh, he he used, he usually wrestles out here in Texas, and it's me and uh, like a few other us, we called him daddy, but we'll be like, go call. It's it's a long story, but it's it's not like that, but it's it's funny. It's funny. Like you have to be there to understand, but it's so funny. We just, we just, yeah, go call daddy. Okay. Whatever. Y'all not going <laughs> to. But anyways, um. Then also it was, now I'm going to do ROH Women Business on here because it's part of ROH because Women Business is AEW, but I'm going to do some ROH Women Business uh, on ROH segment. Okay, so we had Taya Valkyrie um, versus, um, shoot, it was, uh, I cannot think of her name. I'm, so it was one of the twins. I cannot think of her name right now. It's not coming to me because I didn't write it down in my notes. My bad. But Taya Valkyrie ended up getting a win uh she is letting it be known that she's coming for the roh women's you know the tv uh television championship the tv championship that's what i say world's women's world television championship taya valkyrie is coming for that she's letting it be known because she's she's saying she's tv ready because you know her husband is johnny tv so it makes sense and i do like the character uh in roh the assholes fabulous husband and wife it works in roh um you had the four corner survival lady match the women's match it was lady frost diamante trisha dora and queen amianata and i'd highly recommend to watch this match um uh at roh uh i definitely re recommend you watch that match so uh, it was that four corner match. And then um, also after that, uh, again, Queen Am Amunata ended up winning that match at ROH. She could be possibly uh, for the women's, the ROH Women's World Television Championship as well. Who knows? And uh, we also heard that she is signed to AEW. So congrats to her. Um, showcase her more because she is phenomenal. She is great. Okay. Um, also, Josh Woods was in action at ROH. You know, Josh Woods was kind of out for a brief injury, but he is now back in ROH. He had defeated LeBron Conzone. Um, it was Robin Renegade. I'm sorry. That's her name. It finally came to me, y'all. It was Taya Valkyrie versus Robin Renegade. It came to me. It came to me. Uh, then Billy Starks, letting it be known that she is also in the hunt for the ROH Women's TV Championship. Uh, then we had Layla Hirsch and uh, Rachel Erwin. Uh, they was in action. They faced against Emily J and Brittany Jade. Layla Hirsch is really, really good. I love seeing her. As short as she is, that woman can go. But then after that match, Abandon came out. And Abandon stirred down Layla Hirsch. So we'll see what's up with that. Um, yeah, so Abandon was in ROH. We'll see where that takes off in the next episode. Um, after that, it was the men's four corner survival match. It was Jack Cartwheel, Slim J, 
Blake Christian and Gravity. Fun match. I highly recommend this match, too. It was a great match between the four of those guys. It was a lot of stunts, a lot of high flying. Jack Cartwheel, I want to see more of Jack Cartwheel. He is great. He is crazy, and I love it. He's like a daredevil. I want to see more of Jack Cartwheel, so uh, definitely looking forward to seeing him. Uh, Gravity, Gravity did amazing as well. I love seeing Gravity. Uh, Blake Christian is great. Slim J is great. Great match between the four. So I highly recommend that match too. And then after that, Athena gave a promo. She's just letting it be known that she was vacationing. Uh, you know, she's held ROH on her back, so she needs a vacation. And then when she was saying that in the midst of that, Nala Rose ended up attacking her at her gym. So we are seeing an Athena and Nala Rose rivalry, and I and I like it. I like it so far. So Nala Rose can be booked and busy and showcased because, again, we live in a society that's very transphobic and not allowing transgender entertainers in any whether they're wrestling singers perform at certain states in certain cities. Okay, so that plays a huge factor as to why we don't see Nala Rose often because. You know, they are booked at these states and they got to make their money. You know, they booked at the states, a city that, you know, permits trans uh, genders to perform in entertainment. So it can be sports and it also can be some former entertainment. And wrestling is considered entertainment as well as a sport. I know out here in Texas, she can't. Um, perform because she is transgender. So. But I'm liking that she is in ROH because ROH is a streaming service and stuff like that. So um, she can be showcased even more because she needs that support. She's one of the OGs. She's one of the day ones at AEW. And then after that, you had Christian Daniels. I'm sorry, Christopher Daniels versus Lee Johnson. Um, Lee Johnson, like I had said on Twitter, he's definitely improved. He has the potential um, to be a very, very very great wrestler. He is improving. Christopher Daniels is a great veteran, ROH vet, uh, ROH legend, and also in TNA and stuff like that. So great song and dance. They end up shaking hands. Of course, it's Ring of Honor. You, you know, you honor your opponent. And then after that, we had the main event of ROH. It was Cheyenne Taylor promotion versus the infantry. It was a two out of three falls. Uh, fall one fell into Shane Taylor. Fall two was Sean Dean of the infantry. And then fall three, Lee Evil Frank Ocean ends up taking a win for Shane Taylor's promotion. Uh, a main event for both um, both tag teams, infantry, Sean Dean. Um, you know, Sean D is very smooth. He's a smooth wrestler when I was watching that uh, match. It was a really great match. I highly recommend y'all to watch that main event, especially all you, uh, you know, we support black wrestling. Um, support Shane Taylor promotions in the infantry match at Ring of Honor for episode 46. It was really, really good. I did enjoy it. I do want to see more of Sean Dean. I love seeing Sean D wrestling. He's a smooth wrestler. Like he's very smooth. Like, you know, he's he's quick with it. Very quick. Um, so uh now we can get on to women business, play the clip. This is what you need to business. do. You need to stay out of women business. All right, so women business, women business, we've been up. Um, I have been in, I've been loving what I've been seeing for the past few weeks for women business. Okay, uh, so we're gonna get into Dynamite Collision, Rampage, Battle of the Belts, the matches first, and then I will talk about the segments last because there's some stories going on in women business that um, I feel like people are missing, or I just want to help them understand what's going on. Okay, so on um, Dynamite. You had the uh, eight women tag match. It was uh, Thunder Rosa, Chris Statlander, Willow Nightingale, and Anna J. of course, with negative one. Uh, That's the negative one booking. It was versus Julia Hart, uh, Sky Blue, Soraya, and Ruby Soho. The men was going crazy. The men was excited for this match. You know, I was trying to tell them to calm down on Twitter, but they was barking and they was wolfing and stuff like that. This was a, it, it was a great fun tag match. 
um, Th Thunder Rosa being back in daily plays, it was definitely a warm welcome for her. Statlander, she of course, she had one of the greatest daily plays uh, comebacks. Y'all remember when she came back? She was inside the uh, the pinball machine, and she broke through and attacked Penelope Ford. So that was, you know, good callback for her. Willow Nightingale and Anna J. Anna J. You know, she's a daily place day one as well. Um, when especially when she was with Dark Order, and um, they did uh the they did the eight the eight suplex the four women suplex and Julia Hart almost suplexed the wrong person. It's okay, it be like that because she probably was just like, okay, who is who? This looked like my because it was some blondes up in there. It was some you know some people kind of looked alike a little bit, so she was kind of confused, but. It's okay. And then the right person uh, got the pin, which was Anna J in memory of Brody Lee. So it was a great fun match between the girls. Shout out to the AEW girlies. We had uh, eight women, you know, in the ring. So shout out to that. Um, moving on, we had on Collision, it was Red Velvet versus Deanna Perrazzo. Deanna is now all elite. Great showcasing for her. Uh, Red Velvet was amazing in this match. Deanna was amazing in this match. Deanna was doing her a lot of submissions. I've always had respect for Deanna Perrazzo because she beat Fabi Apache clean at Triple A uh, for uh, the championship, the Reina Duranis, uh championship at Triple A. It was uh, three years back. No, I want to say three or two. It was either three or two years back. But she beat Fabi clean. It was a great match between the two. So I've always had respect for Deanna. I knew that she could wrestle. Um, I feel like um, WWE just didn't, didn't see it in her at the time. But she proved um, that she is worthy. She, she proved that, you know, y'all were wrong about me she found herself especially when she was in impact uh impact did do a great job with her she was able to find who she is as a wrestler and uh improved tremendously especially when she was doing her uh her she was doing her little excursion too she was doing her tour when she was the champion at impact um Red Velvet coming back from her injury. She has been amazing. I want to see more Red Velvet on my TV, on my television. She has, She's wrestling comfortable. Like, she's happy. Um, you could tell she's been in the booth. She's been working. She was definitely doing some, um, some psychology, some in-ring psychology. But Deanna came with the win when she did that amazing submission. That, now, that submission looked like it's brutal. It looked like it hurts. And I can't wait to see Deanna versus Serena Deeb. Um, I feel like that's going to be a banger one day. That's my fantasy booking with Deanna Perrazzo. And then on Rampage, we had uh, Sheeta versus Queen Amyanita. Um I'm Yanata. I'm sorry, not I'm Yanita. I'm, I want to say I'm Yanita so bad, but it's Queen I'm Yanata. Um, uh, again, uh, the great match between these two. They it it should have been longer. And now, if it was longer, it could have been one of the ones. But it was definitely probably one of my favorite rampage women's business rampage matches. Um, both was physical. Queen I'm Yanata, She's a great adjuster. She definitely adjusted to Sheeta's style quickly, like quickly, and and she's gonna be she's gonna be something to, uh, force to be reckoned with. And a wrestler that she Queen Amyanata reminds me in a way. Hmm, the way she wrestles, I'm gonna say she re, she's she reminds me of. Mr. Perfect, like a female Mr. Perfect. That's what she reminds me of. That's how she wrestles, like um, like Mr. Perfect. That's her. Okay, but um, she took the win. Um, but I want to see more Queen on my television. She was she worked this week. She. Was at ROH and she also was at Rampage, so I love it. And then also on Battle of the Belts, um, it was Julia Hart versus Anna J. Now, this match it had the potential to be really, really good, but it was very, very slow. Um, you still have one um 
she's improving like they're both improving in ways Anna Jay is still finding herself as a wrestler Julia Hart she's getting there like she's comfortable she's comfortable in her character she's getting better in ring but uh, you know it's a challenge when you have started to um, be that person and you have to be the person to carry especially that you're a champion being a champion especially a woman you have to know how to to carry your opponent so if you're not you got to be careful because if you start to be the person that you know the other opponent can't rely on it's going to start to show and then it's going to start being lackluster on your end and then people going to be like maybe it was too soon for her to get the belt and you don't want that so it, it was it's nobody to blame it's just that Anna Jay is still improving Julie Hart is just now improving and she has to be the leader in the ring because she's a champion so that's that's pressure um, it, it's different when you have somebody that knows what they are doing and they can work with you prior to somebody that is still trying to prove themselves while you also still, you know, trying to work on you. So that can be difficult. So that kind of show. And then being that it was a little bit overshadowed with, you know, which I will talk about later. So it, it was kind of difficult. It wasn't a bad match, but it was very, very slow. But we still believe you. We're going to keep it positive. Uh, like I said earlier, I'm not doing no women business of the week because I want to keep it positive. I want to just be, you know, be for women's wrestling, especially at AEW, because they need all of our support. Um, I, you know, I take people criticism well. You know, when they issue me ideas or they'll inbox me, hey, can you do this and this and this? I'm down for it. So it was asked of me nicely. Um because I I guess people care about my opinion or, or care what I say, but it was just asking me to, no, don't do it, because you just, you know, and I'm like, all right, I, I, I'll see. I'll do this. So um, so that's what that's what it is. It's no women business of the week. No, no more of that. Yeah, unfortunately, no more. Okay. So moving on to the segments of AEW Women's Division, I'll pull up the other um uh, the other picture for me so we can get into these stories now it's some stories going on in aw women business okay it's, a, it's some stories coming um the top one you have a uh, tony storm and mariah may um that is a story a story brewing with each other we know they're gonna eventually face off it's uh it's all in the timing it's all in the timing okay and then uh, on Rampage, the next picture, uh, Soraya is sabotaging the relationship between Ruby Soho and a uh, cool hag. And, um, you know, they're using Harley Cameron. Harley Cameron is the new addition to uh, the Outcast. And I feel like she makes the perfect um addition to the outcast because she's she's loud she's obnoxious she's pretty she's blonde and she fits in so she is helping Soraya try to you know sabotage that relationship so she can have Ruby Soho back focused on the outcast so you have that story brewing and then on the last one you have a, a story brewing between Chris Statlander and Malcolm Stokely you know he is trying to get um Chris Statlander to be uh, heelish, like he's trying to bring out her aggressive side, her because she said, you know, she's more than a woman. What could be more than a woman? Maybe you could be a monster. You know what I'm saying? Like he's trying to bring that out. So he's being very flirtatious. He's being very, you know, generous. He's being very gentleman. He's using you know, trying to use all the tricks of the trade to win over Chris Statlander. He's being very manipulative. You know, he's being like a he's he's acting like a man. That's what that's what he's doing because that's what men try to do. You, you know, they try to give you flowers and chocolate and candy and sweet talk you, smooth talk you to get you on their side. Just to you know, you know how men are. That's basically what he's doing. He being a man, he be he trying to be trifling. That's what he's doing. It looks like it's winning Chris over a little bit, though, because she keeps smiling. She keeps blushing. She's kind of falling for it. Yeah. It could be. I like that I did put up lyrics comment. The first one. 
No, not yeah, that one. It could be because she is coming back to AEW uh, from stardom. I can't see that. I can definitely see that. So um, that is women's business. So let's pull up uh, Samoa Joe again for me. Um, we're going to talk about the Samoa Joe era. We won't take too long on this, but um, Samoa Joe is, like, like I said previously, he is our new champion. And this episode is called Diamonds in the Sky for a reason. We know that diamonds are perfection due to its nature because of the process on how a diamond is formed. You know, you need a lot of pressures in the environment and the temperature that it is made to form a diamond. And that's where Samoa Joe comes in because Samoa Joe can't be made. Now we know diamonds can be made from laboratories too. They are now creating diamonds, but you know, Samoa Joe is one of those wrestlers that you he cannot be created. He cannot, uh, you know, you cannot make him from a lab. He's built from nature since day one from ROH, TNA, WWE, NXT, and, and AEW, where, wherever Samoa Joe is at, his aura, his presence, uh, anything that he has accomplished or he has done, he has left a mark one way or another, big or small, it is Samoa Joe. And that's why Samoa Joe can be compared to the jewelry the, of a diamond, especially a natural diamond, because he is built from pressure. He can handle pressure, any type of pressure. Samoa Joe can handle. He has had extreme types of pressure. He was one of the wrestlers. He wasn't supposed to be back wrestling. He had a terrible neck injury, and uh, he's back wrestling like nothing has never happened to him. Even when he was on NXT, you know, when he went, you know, as people say, he had to drop down to. NXT, he left a mark there. Of course, he left a mark at ROH, TNA, and at WWE, and he wasn't even champion at WWE, but people always go back to reference, especially his promos, because we know WWE is not a technical match, or, you know, we remember moments in WWE more than matches, so for Samoa Joe, he made a lot of moments when when he was at WWE, especially people like to reference when he went against Brock Lesnar. That's, uh, you know, he left some pressure. He'll leave pressure everywhere he go. He is pressure. So he's coming up here and he said it in a press conference. He is for whoever. You know, he's not saying like, I'm not facing this person, this person. He's coming in. He is stepping in like, if you have the audacity to want to wrestle me, you can wrestle me, but I'm going to show you why you have, you know, why you shouldn't even step in the ring with me in the first place, but I'm going to fight you and I'm going to make an example out of you so everybody can see. That's his aura. That's what you get out of Samoa Joe. So we in the Samoa Joe era in this year of the dragon. The year of the dragon and Samoa Joe, and I have said so many times, especially in AEW, Whoever the champion is, is what the theme will be for AEW. If it's a bullshitter person uh, as a champion, that's what you're going to get for the rest of the year. We have Samoa Joe as champion. And so far, what has happened um, since he's been champion, the women's division has picked up. Women business has picked up at, like it never has before. Okay. Uh, you know, we, we lost Kenny, but we've gained. Jack Perry, which I'll get into later. <laughs> uh, of course, Swerve is, uh, you know, he has picked up. Adam Page has picked up. Like, people are starting to pick up the, the continental, you know, the 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 aura. You can, you can just feel that things are about to be for the greater good for AEW because Samoa Joe is the champion. Samoa Joe is the, face of the champion. And it's one of those arguments that people say, do the wrestler make the champion or do the champion makes the wrestler? And in this case, the wrestler is going to make the champion because we are getting out of that MJ averse. We're getting out of that rub that we had now that Samoa Joe is the champion. So we entering a new, new 
new year uh, like I said, the year of the dragon. And if you don't know what the year of the dragon means, the year of the dragon is the district personality, a strong leader, the abilities to correlate, you know, those things. It capitating the demeanor. That's what it says when I looked it up on Google and I put it in my notes. But that correlates to Samoa Joe. He is a leader. He has a distinct personality. Like I said earlier, he has that aura. He has that. If you have the audacity to step in the ring with me, I'm going to make an example out of you. That's his aura. That's always been Samoa Joe. That's what makes him him. You know, you when you see him, either you fear him or you respect him and there's nothing in between. It's nothing in between. You respect him because you fear him or you fear him because you respect him. <laughs> That's what he has. That's why he's a diamond in the rough. Okay. Yeah. Hit that like button. Okay. So we are in the Samoa Joe era and we're going to see what the Samoa Joe era is going to be so far. Even when his celebration in his celebration, Three people has come out for him and he didn't back down not one time. He just laughed like, okay, if that's what you want to do, if that's what's best for you, if you want, if you want to take the championship, let's do it. I could take my suit off right now. That's what Samoa Joe has. And you know what that is? That's that passion back. It goes back to that passion. For the title, that that passion of what that title means, we getting it back. Is we getting it back? No more of this uh, uh, MJ of verse or no verses or this story. We getting that passion back of what that title meant. No matter who, what the character was, no matter if you were heel or a babyface, it always had had that passion, and we're slowly getting it back. Okay. So we're going to be patient with the Samoa Joe run, okay? Now, last but not least, before we close out, before I give my match of the week, some great things happened. And um, I've been talking about it for two days now. I didn't change my profile to this man he is my pillar he's always been my pillar jack perry returned to wrestling he returned at new japan strong that's my pillar no new fans if you wasn't dying if you wasn't dying during the the beginning when he was looking like that don't come don't come now we ain't accepting no new fans you should have stayed dying for the come up we ain't accepting no new fans that's a public service announcement uh no new fans i saw some people trying to sneak and say uh-uh uh, -uh, uh -uh, talking about some now i have to no no new fans no new fans what dre said no new no 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 new friends no new friends no new friends no 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 <laughs> yeah man jack jack is back shout out to the jackins we jacking off Shout out to the Jackets. The Jackets are here. Jack Perry has returned. He attacked Sh Shoto and New Japan Strong at the Battle of the Valley pay-per-view that was on uh, this Saturday. It happened on Saturday. He came back. Um, he is the scapegoat. And we back, baby. We up. We up. Jackins are jacking off. We are up. We up and it's stuck. We jacking off. Shout out to the Jack Perry game, the Jackins. We are here. We are here. It's a new day. He tore up the AEW contract. Shout out to shout out to K Fave is back because people on the timeline was like, he working for himself. See, he going on business for himself. See, in Jack Perry, we trust. Shout out to the Jackins. Jacking off. We up. Stop that. What did y'all talk about? Shout out to the, the Jackins. We up, baby. We up. The real pillar is back. The real is back. And we up to stuck. Let's go. 
Let's go. Y'all try to. Jack Perry is hated for, for standing up. For standing up for AEW. That's why he is hated. But we here now. People having melt. Yeah, I saw people having meltdowns. People was going a green blue in the face. People bringing up old stuff. People digging up stuff when he was a kid and all types of stuff. Jack Perry is hated. And guess what? He about to go to Japan and eat, and he gonna come back, and we gonna be like, you should have stayed down. You should have stayed down to the come up. You should have stayed down. No new fans. We ain't accepting no new fans at all. The Jackins have said we got our fan base. He is straight. We ain't doing no new fans. If you, 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 you should have stayed down. Y'all was, y'all was scared to be Jack Perry fans because y'all thought it was cool not to be a Jack Perry fan because y'all want to impress somebody. Y'all ain't making no decisions for his y'all selves. I told y'all since day one, Jack Perry is the one. He has the look. All he needs to do is work on the mic and build himself, and he is the one because he is going to be the one. He looks just like his daddy. Y'all just mad because Jack Perry looked better than everybody that hates on him. He look better than all y'all. All y'all that hate on Jack Perry, he look better than all y'all. And he got the bad, one of the baddest females at AEW. He won. Y'all lost. Look at y'all girl and, and then look at Jack Perry's girl. Look at y'all girl at home. And then look at the and look at Jack Perry's girl. Just take take a brief moment. Just look to the right or to the left. Look to the right or to the left. And then go on your phone and Google Anna J. Google Anna J. Now look at Anna J. And then look to the right and look or look to the left at your girl. Mm hmm. Now go get a mirror. Now look at Jack Perry currently and then look at yourself in the mirror. Yeah. Mm hmm. Jack Perry won. He won. He looks better than all his haters. Everybody that hates on Jack Perry looks better than you. Look his daddy. He looked just like his daddy. The daddy was fine. Jack Perry is fine. Jack Perry can't talk. Well, can you talk? Cause some of y'all, some of y'all don't talk. Some of y'all just be staring at people. I'm just saying, look to the, if, if I hate Jack Perry, okay, look, look to the left or to the right at who you got at home and then look at Anna J. I'm just saying though. Okay. So shout out to the Jackins. We here, we here to stay. We ain't going nowhere. We don't care what no punk fans say. If all punk fans wear big clothes, um, we don't care what them um they be still wearing N1 uh uh basketball shorts. So we don't care what they think. They still wear N1 basketball shorts. They still wear basketball shorts under their pants. Y'all remember how you know, dudes used to wear like shorts, uh, and then they pants over it like they were back to hoop after the basket uh after school or something. That's the punk fans. That's what they that's what they look like. That's what they do. So shout out to the Jack Perry fans. Jackins, we are here. We ain't going nowhere. We jacking off. We are. Hey, yo, that was great. Hey, yo, that was great. <laughs> yes. Go Jackins. Okay. All right. So before I get out of here. Uh, match of the week, it goes to Hangman Page versus Claudio. 
uh, Castanoli. They are the match of the week uh, for the new season of All Elite with Keeks. Again, hard-hitting style, great opener, uh, technical match, very physical. I enjoyed it. Everybody enjoyed it. It was up and it was stuck, okay? So that was Keeks match of the week for this week, all right? So um, announcements before I get up on out of here. Eagles fans, oh, my God, I get the Eagles going on with the Cowboys. Somebody's in here. Somebody's mad at Jalen Hurts. I don't know what he did just now, but uh, it's sounding uh, look like Eagles going to be on the couch with us. Go Eagles, I guess. They're going to be on a – oh, <laughs> they got a safety. Let's go, but – but – um. Yeah, so another like I said again, um, if you was in here earlier, the changes I um the same formats is the same. It's just not gonna be show of the week. Um, because we don't have people not want to do collision and stuff like that no more. Everybody's doing everything. Um, being that people ask me to cover ROH, I have added ROH on the show. Um I'm not doing women business of the week anymore or wrestler of the week, I'm doing match of the week. Um, so this is the new format. I am being a little bit strict on my show because, again, I want to help people understand what they are looking at and uh, what they are seeing and what they are focusing on, especially if, you know, if you don't watch AEW and I get a lot of people that don't watch, they just listen to the show to help them understand what is going on on AEW. And I do appreciate y'all, too. So um, that's what it is for this year. This year we're going to have some fun. Uh, we going to learn something, get your pen and paper. If you're a writer, if you, um, you know, you are interested in doing in content and things like that, get your pen and paper out. You're going to learn over here at All Elite with Keeks. It's no narratives. It's none of that. I'm, you know, it's no opinions with no facts. It's opinions with facts over here. And I'm just here to help educate, um, congratulate. And just give y'all a, a clear understanding what is possibly going on while also giving in my uh, opinion on a few things. But this is where we at. We are on an out of sight, out of mind this year. I'm on a different energy, so I'm just going to give that to you guys. So um, that's what it is this year. Every Monday is live. That is not changing. It's going to always be the same it's just different. It's just things added. Uh, with ROH, it's for me to help y'all to, to get a clear on who to look out, especially when these ROH pay-per-views is out and things like that. Of course, you can follow me on Twitter. I will be tweeting on ROH on Thursdays and stuff. And um, also, you know, just make sure you follow All Elite with Keeks on Twitter, also on Instagram, and also on TikTok. I will be promoting i'm always promoting my show um yes i will you know i will do guests um i'm not big or small you don't have to be popular you don't have to be popping or nothing like that if you even if you up and coming even if you thinking about doing uh wrestling content creating and you want hey i, I want to do your show to get some practice in come on forward i'm all for it. just dm me if you're not a weirdo you will hear from me. And if you are a weirdo, you, I will let you know. Fuck no. I have done it so many times. I don't mind telling people no. Because I will tell, I will tell you no. No, I'm not feeling you. No, I don't like you. No, I don't like what you be saying. No, I don't like what you stand for. I'm honest with it. So, this is all, this is a factual. 20... <laughs> I don't know what the, they, they, she is going crazy right now. That she is going to desert Eagles is pissing her off. It's so funny. But um, yes, factual statements out 2024. So that's what this show is about. Of course, I'm a, I'm a still be me now. I'm a still have my jokes. I'm a still say my sayings. Uh, but when, when I get down to the nitty gritty, when I get down to the nitty gritty, it's straight nitty gritty. Ain't no bullshit. Okay. So, 
we ain't on that. I'm on some totally different, okay? Especially AEW. It's a lot of wrestling. It's a lot of coverage. Not a lot of people like to cover AEW because you have to understand the in-ring psychology. You have to understand what's going on. And not a lot of people can really understand that. They, you know, and and you got a, a woman that can do it, okay? A lot of AEW girlies can do it. So support a lot of us. You got Charlie and them over there at Wrestle Purist. You have Lyric. You have me. You also have uh, um, Mika over there at uh, Body Slam. The AEW girlies is doing, we're doing our thing in content creation, um, you know, especially breaking down these wrestling, uh, you know, hardcore wrestling fan base. So support us, support me. Thank y'all for always supporting me. Y'all know it was this this day was a difficult day for me but i am strong you cannot stop me you cannot break me i'm a strong i'm probably the strongest person i know so um this episode was special for me you're gonna get more of me it's gonna get better um yeah i hope you guys conquer your goals and your dreams in 2024 i hope you guys enjoy what you like in wrestling and I hope you guys have a good night. Hit my new getaway music. First of all, there's no such thing as white collar crime. And there's definitely no such thing as black on black crime. Crime is crime. Let me explain something to you. I don't care if you have a white collar or a tank top. If you rob me, I'm gonna whoop your ass.